Can I, can I have your attention? All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, it's kind of an exciting day for us at Thermex. Um, we want to welcome the mayor and Paul Costell from J.P. Morgan Chase um, and all of, all of our guests. Um, I'm going to get right to the business at hand, which is to introduce a man who obviously doesn't need an introduction. Um, but what I will say is uh, this is someone who has demonstrated, at least to me, in my small manufacturing world, um, a great commitment to manufacturing in Louisville and the Louisville region. Um, and I think that comes from the years of experience he had running companies and being an entrepreneur. I think, I think uh, having that hands-on knowledge of what it's like to, to run a company day to day um, gives him that appreciation for what we as a company are trying to do. Um, and it's very, very important to us, and we appreciate that. So without any further introduction, I give you uh, Mayor Greg Fisher. Thank you. Thank you, Ray, and good afternoon to everybody. First thing I noticed when I came into your all's shop is how clean it looks. So congratulations to the team for keeping a clean shop here. And usually what happens if you see a clean shop, you see a, a safe shop. And uh, that, to me, was always the number one thing in any manufacturing company. So I had the pleasure of starting a manufacturing company in 1980, and there were four of us. And we almost went bankrupt three different times. But fourth, our fourth time we tried, we did okay. Uh, but so you guys have got a nice, clean shop, and I appreciate the hard work that goes into that because it, it's a daily or hourly thing, as I'm sure you guys can testify back here. And, and you can't be a quality operation if you're not a safe operation. So... Good job on all the work that goes into that. So uh, as Ray talked about, I do have a manufacturing background. That's uh, where I started my career and spent my first 20 years or so into that. And so when I came into office in 2011, I, I knew just from talking to a lot of companies that there was a lot of uh, room to grow in exporting. Uh, it is so much easier to export a product than it is to invent a new product. And there's a big, big market out there that around the world that's uh, ready to get after it. And what the other thing that's happened is, is our foreign competition has become more sophisticated. They're coming at us in our market. So if we're not ramping up to become global companies ourselves, you know, we could potentially be in trouble. So to me, it was an easy thing for us to emphasize. And the, I think the purpose of government, city government, is to create platforms for companies and people uh, to flourish and to thrive. And one great way to do that is to grow business, because obviously that creates jobs and jobs uh, create opportunities and more room for entrepreneurship. And I also knew when we took a look around Kentucky, we had some great products that we should be shipping more of around the world. So as we thought about how we could scale up this opportunity, uh, Jim Gray, who's the mayor of Lexington, he and I were uh, elected on the same day and Jim and I knew each other from our business community beforehand so we said let's get together and try to show Kentuckians that the city of Louisville and Lexington don't have to be competitive uh, on all things certainly on the basketball court but business-wise we should be coming together and creating a bigger region so that when international firms look at making an investment they think of us as a region of two and a half million people as opposed to uh, Louisville at 1.4 million metro population and the balance of what we now call the BEAM region, the Bluegrass Economic Advancement Movement. So that's the 22 counties between Lexington and Louisville that Mayor Gray and I started this thing called the BEAM program. And that was all designed to create a strategic uh, approach to regional economic development. Now we've had a lot of people help us along the way because we're in our fifth year now. Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, and you're going to be hearing more from Paul Costell here in a moment, really stepped up at the beginning to support this whole concept. Uh, it was us working with the Brookings Institution, J.P. Morgan Chase, and several other national uh, operations, and then a lot of companies here from the Louisville-Lexington uh, region. And then we decided to focus on exporting, obviously, because we felt like there was a lot of immediate short-term wins that we could get there, and then long-term capacity that could be uh, developed in our companies as well. So due to this focus, these past five years have really been an exciting time to be exporting in Kentucky. And I'm happy to announce that we've experienced five straight years of record-breaking export growth. 
with 2015 exports totaling more than $28 billion. So that's billion with a B. That's a lot of products. It's a lot of jobs. Hopefully that's a lot of paychecks as well. And so it's nothing but good news when you see that type of growth. So when you think about the products that we uh, export from the beam region, there's quite a few. Obviously a lot of work in autos and auto parts, machinery like what you guys have here, dental and medical equipment, chemicals, uh, translation management software is going very rapidly. Ceiling fans from our friends in Lexington with their name of big ass fans, people like that. Uh, mattresses, locks. If you've been paying attention to the news lately, you know we ship a lot of disco balls out of here. And what do you all think is one of the most rapidly growing liquid exports we have? Bourbon. Bourbon. That is correct. And then bourbonism, we've created a 24-7 tourism experience, so people are coming from throughout the world now to be tourists here in our hometown and travel around and experience the Bourbon Trail and Urban Bourbon Trail. So that's good. So we've got, uh, it's really taken a team effort for this to happen. We've got some of our partners here with us today, uh, the U.S. Commercial Service and the World Trade Center Kentucky and other partners in the Beam region provide services and expertise to help exporters build capacity and find new customers. What we found is with smaller companies, and you guys are a good medium-sized company, but a lot of smaller companies don't think of themselves potentially as global companies. And so we have to go in and give some technical assistance and talk about what markets might be appropriate for their products, help them understand how to get paid, uh, help them potentially understand that, hey, there's different uh, electrical requirements in another country and it requires some different type of approval agency. So really kind of basic stuff to work through, but if you're caught up in day-to-day -day American uh, activity only, it can be a little overwhelming for you at first. So to have that kind of coach get through it is really important. Janine Duncliffe on our team, Janine is back there, has been invaluable in providing this type of assistance around the state for a long time and certainly around our city, so we appreciate that. I want to recognize a few folks. Brian Miller is here with us today. Brian, where are you? Brian has been a great partner along with Peggy Pauley with the U.S. Commercial Service, so thank you. Uh, I don't see Ed Webb in the house, but Ed is with the World Trade Center of Kentucky, and he's also been a big partner in this as well. Then we are also have been helped by GLI, Greater Louisville Incorporated, our Chamber of Commerce, for for their administrative support in helping us manage this great grant with uh, Chase and, and Brookings. And Dina Karam has been helping us with that, and we appreciate that. And then as I mentioned before, J.P. Morgan Chase has been a really, really valuable partner, uh, helping us provide a lot of support, much needed support, that help our small and medium-sized companies to invest in those areas. So they, they have given grants uh, totaling $200,000 to companies to help them get more into this uh, program. And I think with Thermex here, you all were the recipient of one of these grants that resulted in getting a large order, I believe. Perhaps you'll tell us about that here in a second. So there's been a tremendous return on these investments, Paul, that you guys have given to the community, of, I think of about 90-fold or so when you look at what you've invested and what it's resulted in. So oftentimes it's just getting people started with that first step, and that's what these micro-grants are. They're $3,500 to $4,500. They've helped 40 companies now in the region do things like attend international trade shows, uh, carry out some customized meeting agendas when you're sitting down for the first time, let's say with a company from Korea or somewhere, how's that going to work out? Where's it going to be? Do you need translation services? What do you need to know about their markets? There's just a bunch of basic stuff that you've got to learn for you to be able to do business with that firm. So it, it, like many things that are successful, it just takes a lot of people to do it. And it could be from the public sector, the private sector, nonprofit sector. But we know we're at our best when we pull all these people together and work on a project from many different angles. And in the case as it relates to manufacturing as well, it doesn't get done if you all don't make it. And you don't make it on time, in a quality way, ever improving, and in a safe way as well. So. At the end of the day, it's kind of hard to see that you're here making this stuff, but halfway across the world, somebody's manufacturing plant is running because of the quality product that you guys made and the jobs that then that has created here in Louisville. So on behalf of the city, we appreciate that very much. Congratulations to everybody. And now we're going to hear from Mr. Paul Costell. Paul's the president of the Kentucky Morgan, 
Kentucky Market at J.P. Morgan Chase. Paul Costell. Thanks, Mayor. The, uh, you know, the exciting thing um, that I get to do every day is learn about different companies, primarily small businesses, and how they make money, and how they operate, and the, their, see their employees, see their equipment. And Ray and I were talking uh, just before we came in and said that uh, he's, a, he's a former banker, uh, become entrepreneur, and so I celebrate that. But, but it's just interesting as you go through this park, and as I was driving here today, to see all the different companies and all the different things they do, and you think about you know, 20 years ago, or maybe now 30 years ago, Mayor, uh, you were kind of, your company was on the leading edge when you all were exporting. Today, I'd say if you're not exporting yet, you just don't know you're getting ready to, because it's truly a, a global economy, and at J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, we are a global firm. We believe it's important uh, for local companies and for entrepreneurs to understand that, and hopefully we provide some help to them with the grants we provided over the last two years. As the mayor mentioned, over $200,000. And also with our expertise that we have globally, hopefully we help those companies expand. Because the key to our success, the key to really uh, Louisville success, I'd say Kentucky's and really our nation's, uh, are small businesses. Small businesses create over 90% of the jobs in this co country. And going forward, over 80% of the consumption in the world will be done internationally. So we have to focus, our small businesses have to focus internationally in order to survive and thrive and continue to hire employees and have sites like this. So we were excited. Uh, when Mayor Fisher and Mayor Gray got together and formed BEAM uh, as part of our Global Cities initiatives with Brookings Institute, we decided to join together and help fund that and also help fund this export program that we've been doing, as I mentioned earlier. I think, uh, lastly, I would just like to say, you mentioned a few things uh, that, that are exported, but you know, there's a few other things I thought that you might not know that a little bit smaller business export than you mentioned earlier, Mayor, and that is there's uh, coloring, they go in drinks, it's a manu that's uh, sold all over the world, manufactured here in Louisville. There's pipes that go in irrigation and wastewater plants all over the world, manufactured here in Louisville. Uh, and then uh, shelves for kitchens, manufactured here in Louisville, sold all over the world. So uh, there's just lots of products that lots of people don't know, people doing things like, like Ray and you all are doing here. And so uh, congratulations for the hard work you all have done here, and good luck, Ray. You know, and as I look around your shop, and I went to your website before I got here, I mean, it seems to me that you guys have got a, a huge potential still in new markets and products. So I'd encourage everybody, you know, when you're like, oh, gosh, why do we have to try this something new? You never know where it's going to go. Our first export customer was a guy named Alan Chang from uh, Taipei, and he walked into a trade show booth that we had in 1987. It was the first time we were able, ever able to afford a trade show, trade show booth. And he asked uh, if he could buy one of these products that we had on display, and it was a commercial ice bagger. And I was thinking to myself, that's funny, because nobody in America wants to buy this product, but this guy from Taipei does. And I told him, uh, we'd love to sell you this product, but we're going to have to work together to figure it out because I'm not sure, you know, what all's involved with uh, selling into, Taip into Taiwan, et cetera. So anyway, we ended up figuring that out, and what, this was his first product that he sold into 7-Eleven in, in Taiwan. Then 7-Eleven went into China, and then we, so we went along with them, and we were the first company in the world to introduce ice and beverage dispensing equipment into China through 7-Eleven. And so that ended up uh, producing about 70 jobs through that relationship then over the course of the next decade, just because we said yes to something that we really weren't quite sure how we were going to resolve it. And when we brought it back to the shop, some folks were like, well, is this really going to be worth the trouble? So the moral of the story is you never know, but you got to try. And these uh, foreign markets are so big that sometimes they result in some really good activity. And when I see the variety of products that you all have and the expertise that you have, I, it would not surprise me if you could double the size 
of your business based on your export capacity here. So kind of embrace those opportunities, if you would. Now, when you think about the whole program and you think about the readiness of Kentucky manufacturers, beam re region manufacturers, whether or not there is that kind of potential out there. Well, listen to this. We achieved the five-year goal that we set, which was to increase the number of companies exporting by 50%. This was a five-year goal, and we achieved that goal in three years. Okay, so, yeah. So what that tells you, obviously, is there's a lot more demand out there. So developing and deploying the grant were amongst the strategies that we had identified with the BEAM regional plan. And this grant and the results to date, I think, really represent a multi-year commitment and speak for themselves when you achieve results in two-thirds of the time that you set out to do that. So where we're at here today, obviously, is because Thermex Thermotron is one of the companies that benefited from the grant from J.P. Morgan Chase, and there's a real nice story that goes along with that. So, Ray, please share that with us. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate that. Um, well, again, on behalf of all of the employees of Thermex, I, I welcome everybody here. Um, it's nice to see so many familiar faces um, and some, some new faces that I haven't seen. Um, before I get too into things, I want to just give you a little background on, on Thermex, uh, most of which many of you don't know. Um, we trace our roots back to Louisville, Kentucky to 1930, um, when we relocated here from North Carolina with the notion that you could dry tobacco leaves with radio frequency heat. Um, unfortunately, that idea did not work. Maybe fortunately, I'm not sure. Um, but um, it, it, it allowed us to establish roots here in, in, the, in the 30s. And over the next 75 plus years, we've had a lot of applications that, that actually did work. So um, some of those things, just to give you an idea of what we do, um, include in the medical industry, they include the seal that goes around an IV bag or a blood bag or even a pressure cuff, a seal that, that, that can't be broken or hopefully would never be broken. And just behind the table there, you might see an example of one or two of those types of things. Now, we don't make those products, but we make the machine that actually seals them. Um, in the automotive industry, for years, we've made the pad that goes into the carpet um, that is in the driver's side of your car. And if you look down on the driver's side of your car, you'll see either a heel pad or a toe pad, um, maybe even a scuff pad, an area where the, where the foot rubs into the carpet or would what rub into the carpet. That pad is sealed um, typically with a Thermatron RF press. Um, so so that's, um, th those are a couple of things that we do. One of, the, um, one of the products that we make and have made over the years that we are, I, I would say, anonymously hated for um, is a clamshell package. And um, most of you are familiar with this, um, this package here. Um, you, you often might have gotten it if you bought a new cell phone or a piece of electronics and you've tried to open it and your scissors have gone all cattywampus and you've probably cursed the manufacturer of the package, but probably never cursed the manufacturer of the machine that made the seal that you couldn't get into. But secretly, you've hated us. And to those, I would say, I think the expression is, let the haters hate. <laughs> so I threw that out there to prove to my son that I'm still hip. <laughs> anyway, um, we're very... Very, we're, we're very proud here in, in uh, Thermex of our heritage of, in Louisville and the fact that we're a made in America shop. Um, we, we engineer, manufacture, design, service, RF and manufacturing equipment. Um, I like to say that we bend it, we weld it, we wire it, we assemble it, we ship it, and we service it. Um, all of that happens right here. Um, for decades, our business had been focused on the automotive industry, but a few years ago when the economy took a turn for the worse, we found ourselves needing to diversify. Um, and so we set upon a strategy with two, two primary goals, try to diversify our customer base and try to increase our exports. Um, at about that time, our friends from J.B. Morgan Chase came along 
in the, with the BEAM grant. And, and um, that offered us an opportunity to fortify our strategy to increase our exports. Um, it helped us to participate in a, in a medical trade show we had never participated in before. In fact, we hadn't been going to trade shows for a while. Um, but we went out to what was called the, the MDM West. It's one of the largest medical shows uh, in the world today out in Anaheim, California. And we took a booth out there um, and we, we put up our nameplate and, and we shook a lot of hands. And it gave us a platform to uh, meet a lot of customers who we don't normally get out to see, but it also gave us a platform to meet some prospective customers who um, we had been talking to. And as a result of those conversations, and particularly one particular conversation, um, that led ultimately led to us receiving um, what, what for our company would be a very sizable order for, a, um, for an RF press that ultimately was, uh, was shipped to Mexico. So um, there's real tangible evidence that we have of what, what happens when organizations like the J.P. Morgan Chase Beam give you a grant and how that money is used. Um, just to give you a few numbers, not to bore you too much with where we are in our strategy for exporting. In 2013, we exported 23% of our machine sales at Thermex went overseas. 2015, that number is over 50%. 50% of what we sell in terms of machine equipment goes overseas. And that number, that number will either be as good, if not better, in 2016. So there's real tangible results that we're seeing. W what does that mean in terms of jobs? Because, you know, that's ultimately, you know, that's, that's a, one of the best measures of how an economy is doing. Back in 2000, in early part of 2014, we had uh, 10 production employees on the production floor. Today we have 15 production employees and we have 10 temp to hire employees. So if you just look at that statistically, there's a, there's a huge amount of growth that's happened and you can see that's, all, that's almost all being driven by our export growth. Um, so we're, we're very excited about that. Setting aside the numbers for a second, what I'd like to talk about is, is the, the grant itself. And so when Thermex had a need to grow its exports and to focus its, its strategy on exports, and we received a, we received a grant from the J.P. Morgan Chase found, Beam Foundation, um, it was both very tangible to us and it was, it was actually very easy to obtain. And that was something for somebody who spent uh, a number of years in Washington, D.C., who's worked with a number of government and non-quasi-government organizations, the word easy to do and easy to do business with just are not synonymous. And in this case, it was very easy for us. And so um, not only were we able to use it and we were able to see um, production and, and, and increase sales from it, but it was, it was a very simple process. Um, so I'd like to thank both Mayor Fisher and Paul, Paul Costell from J.P. Morgan Chase for that. Um, that has been uh, a very significant part of what we're doing. Um, I'd also like to give a, a quick shout out. I know the mayor did it. I'm going to do it again to Janine Duncliffe in the back. Um, Janine has been with us in supporting us um, when she was at the Cabinet for Economic Development um, and now with uh, the mayor's office and the Louisville government. And she is tirelessly out there trying to promote Louisville exports. And so um, thank you, Janine, for all of that. In closing, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for being here. Um, I'd like to just give recognition to all the Thermex Thermotron employees. Um, <laughs> you guys have heard me say it before. We're nothing without you guys. And sorry for being a little emotional, but this is the heart of our company right here. Um, and I appreciate you guys. So um, that's it for me. Uh, Mayor Fisher, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. Good job, man. Thanks for showing us your heart. Good job. All right, way to go. No, it's a, it's a team effort. It's a family effort to get stuff like this done. So congratulations on having that bond. So we still got work to do. Uh, we recently announced a partnership with the Brookings Institution where we're working on another phase of attracting more international capital 
to the city. So we're working on a foreign direct investment plan uh, for the Beam region. So what that means is there's a lot of global capital looking to locate here in the States. So we would like to get our fair share of that global capital here in Louisville as well. So what that will do is obviously grow more investment and grow more job opportunity for us. So just like we worked on the export plan, we're going to work on its twin brother with foreign direct investment here uh, in the coming years. And then we also have set a new goal on this export program since we achieved the last goal in three years. We've, we are now setting a new goal to increase export successes again by 50% in the next four years. So we want to grow that 50% in the last three years by another 50% here in the next four years. And if the past is any prologue, obviously, we think we're in good shape with that as more and more people gain awareness on the importance of having a global business. So thanks to Thermex Thermatron and the whole team for hosting us here today. We, congratulations to everybody here on this step in the journey and look forward to more good things. So with that, we'll take any questions if you guys have them. All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming today. Thank you. This has been a Metro TV production, a public service of Louisville Metro Government.